Hello everyone and welcome to my top 5 uh, op opening novelties which I will make after a each elite tournament. Uh, the first one was about uh, Norway chess and now it's about the Grand Chess Tour in uh, Zagreb which uh, just saw the victory of the world champion with an amazing result. But uh, we are just interested here about uh, openings in this uh, video. So let's start with uh, number 5. And the number 5 is uh, the game between Wesley So and Shakri Amavidyarov. So Wesley started with one knight f3, which is clearly um, shows his intention uh, not to deal with Gunfeld because Mavidyarov is playing Gunfeld um, almost uh, all the time these days. Knight e3, bishop g7. Few rounds before Mavidyarov tied d5 against uh, the world champion, and after takes, takes, and h4. He got into troubles uh, very quickly, so it's um, very logical that he's trying to change bishop g7, e4. Of course, after d4, you get you get what you want with black. You get your gunfeld, so e4 is very logical. And if you just play d6 and d4, and it's a king's Indian, so it's not what Mamedio wanted. So he played e5 here, which is a very new move, which was invented. Uh, by uh, Daniel Duboff, uh, my, my colleague in, uh, in Team Carlsen for this uh, Kawana Carlsen match. So, very creative uh, young uh, Russian player. So, e5 is a very interesting move. Takes is, of course, uh, very logical, as always. Black, which is play knight c6 and uh, get a good position on uh, dark square. And why not to take that pawn? Castle. Knight f3, going back, and look here, this is a point of black play. And before, uh, Anish Giri tied d3 against uh, Dubov, but after d5, takes, takes, bishop d2. Uh, then he played bishop g4 in order to play on dark square, and he got excellent compensation against Anish and uh, drew that game. So Wesley here uh, came up with a new idea, which is bishop d3. In the game, my video of played the knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, bishop takes e3, pawn takes, rook e4, bishop e3, and here, if black pawn would be on g7, it would be just completely fine. But with a pawn g6, this king on g8 is always always weak, always weak, and uh, it's not so easy. I believe here, white is a, is a bit better. Of course, b6 is not possible because of queen d5 hitting both rooks. So d6 is very logical, c5, d5, and now h3. He could have played as well queen d2, just to play on dark square. He just wants to, to prevent bishop g4. Of course, uh, after queen d2, if you go bishop g4, I would just move the knight. After taking h3, this knight is very well placed on d4. So h3 is a very logical move as well. I would. I've preferred, I guess, queen d2, but this is because queen d2 as well. You, you can play, you can play with long castle, so you create uh, one more option for you. But Wesley plan was uh, very much fine, and he got a slightly better position after b6 castle, bishop b7, rook e1. And it's a bit more pleasant after knight d7, knight d2, rook e8, knight b3. This bishop is not really well placed. And uh, white had a uh, slight advantage, which uh, and so Wesley so played a very good game and won, uh, won convincingly. So, but let's come back to our uh, opening. And after Bishop D3, so I checked uh, a couple of moves here. Um, the first move which comes to mind is of course D5, and after takes, Knight takes. Ah, no, sorry, Bishop F5 and Castle. Very logical, takes, takes everything, rook e4, and now black, white has a strong move, queen b3, which not only protects this pawn, but uh, attacks this guy as well. And it's not so easy to deal with that uh, for black, you have to play some move like like b6 probably, and it's not really comfortable, you can go d3 and bishop g5. So it's a clear pawn up, and uh, black uh, didn't equalize. So after bishop d3, I checked as well the funny move, b5. Which is a reminder of this uh, Sicilian Rosolimo, which uh, uh, Fischer, where Fischer invented this uh, before move 
which Kawana played against uh, Magnus Carlsen in the World Championship match. I will show you the first moves uh, here, e4, c5, knight f3, knight f6, bishop b5, g6, bishop g, uh, castle, sorry, bishop g7, rook e1, e5, and here he played b4. Just the idea is very simple to speed up, to speed up the development now, c3, followed by d4. And uh, White has some play. Uh, Magnus in that game didn't have any points, but it's always an idea to, to look at. So after bishop d3, b5 is not, is really not stupid. If you take on b5, then I get what I want. I just play d5 and get a lot of play. If you go b5, I just go, I can go knight g4, I can go d4. This is very, very dangerous for, for White, I believe. I will get back this pawn and get a nice development. Maybe a6 will come. So I don't think this is... Uh, Recommended. So you can as well take on b5 with the knight, but then d5 would come. The thing to take here, so you have to take, and now c6 very strong move. Of course, you cannot take because the bishop is hanging on d3. And after knight c3, I would just take, and again, knight c6, bishop b7, and the thing to take here, it's a very good compensation for, for black. So after b5, I think the right move, the right action is to play castle, take on c4, bishop c4, knight e4, which is the only move which makes sense, otherwise d3 and it's uh, better for, for white, or maybe e5 as well, if you let me do. So knight takes e4, bishop d5, I think this is uh, a good move, forcing uh, black to take on c3 because this rook is hanging, takes on c3 c6 basically is the only move and now bishop g5 very strong move which develop one piece with tempo you have probably have to play something like this i will just play bishop b3 followed by rook e1 queen d2 and uh, white huge uh, lead in development i think uh, guarantee uh, a better game so this bishop this way might might bust uh, basically this line but let's see, maybe we will find some uh, some people who wants to take to take up the challenge as black. So now we'll go to the to the number the number four. The number four, which is uh, Mamedyarov against uh, Vichy Anan. So Mamedyarov almost uh, has, uh, has always started with 1d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3. And generally, I mean, last couple of years, uh, Vichy was playing a lot of, of Queen's Gambit, being very solid with it. But recently he moved uh, to Vienna. So d4, e4, this is a modern line. I mean, not yet, because here you can still transpose to bishop d5, which will be the subject of our number 3. Uh, in my ranking, so but bishop c4 is became now the main line. Take on e4 castle. Of course, you have the video series of uh, of Jan Gustafsson if you want to to build up a, a full repertoire as black in the Vienna. It's a very very good series. And uh, so here he played knight f6. Knight c3 is very dangerous for black in general. So knight f6 became the main move. Queen a4 check. Knight c6. And here Magnus Carlsen against Duda in, in Vikanze play knight e5. But didn't get much uh, out of the opening against uh, Duda after rook b8, which is a move uh, I first played in 2010 actually. Uh, I lost that game to Alkias, uh, but the opening was not to blame. So um, rook b8 is a way to, to protect this bishop. After knight takes this is b takes this 6 you see that. Uh, the bishop is protected on b4. So this line, 10 years later, is not yet busted. And that's why Mamedyarov played bishop g5 here, uh, threatening d5. So black has to take here, takes, castle. And uh, here he played the, the new move, very simple and logical. But I like it very much. Rook f1 uh, instead of uh, rook e1, which was played uh, by Wojtasek. Of course, the idea just to play knight e5 and f4 and this rook could come here but this is too direct and uh, didn't give uh, white uh, any advantage here but rook f1 is a uh, i think quite a clever move knight e7 bishop d3 
knight f5, okay d1, just putting everything in the center, h6, bishop c1, so here you can see we have two bishops, we have center, we have these hooks very well placed, and um, black has problem, problems sorry, to, to, find, to find a plan, just uh, it's very difficult to, to play that position. So he played b6, which is very logical, c4, rook e8, and now bishop b2, and now you can see the two bishops are attacking the king, basically, my, you see, my bishop went to g8 uh, immediately, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a point. Just d5 is in the air, always, bishop b7 wants to take, 95, 97, and now very strong move, but very logical, bishop b1 to create this battery, queen c2, fought by d5, which she defended quite well but uh, couldn't save the game because uh, the position is really very difficult to play uh, for black. So an excellent opening preparation from uh, from Shaklia. And now we will uh, go to the number three of our uh, uh, top five. So the number three uh, sees the world champion uh, Magnus Carlsen as white against Levon Aronian, and we will see another Vienna uh, through a different move order actually. So, uh, sorry, d4, knight f6, c4, a6, knight f3, d5, those are well known. Knight c3, bishop b4, this is Ragozin actually, but uh, this is a move order that uh, many black players use to avoid this, what we saw in the last video, this is dc, e4, bishop b4, bishop c4. So they just play bishop b4, bishop g5, but you give, of course, extra cd5 here for white. But this is, of course, a completely different story. So bishop g5, dc, and now we are back. We are back to Vienna. So e4, c5. And here Magnus plays a very uh, rare move. If I, it's not that rare, but it's considered to be completely harmless. The main move is here, bishop c4, which he played in a previous game against uh, Vichy Anand. So e5, let's see what was his idea. cd4, knight d4. Uh, bishop c3. Here, Jan in his video series gave queen a5, which actually leads to the same. After take on f6, you have to take on c3, b c3, queen g5. Of course, you cannot take immediately on g5, because that would be a check. That would be quite bad for, for black. Knight c6, just take. And it's a disaster for black. So. After bishop c3, b c3, queen a5, which basically gets to the same, queen g5, takes, takes. This is a very well known position, and a lot of games were played here. Queen d2, castle, bishop c4, rook d8, very logical play. You want to play knight c6, of course, you cannot grab that pawn. That would be way too greedy. Long castle followed by rook g1, and it's a, it's a complete massacre. Rook d8, queen e3. You just unpin this knight to be able to take on c6 if um, black does it uh, right away. So bishop d7, which is a very, very logical move just to develop and to play knight c6. And now this is a novelty of the world champion, which is long castle, which is, of course, uh, looks very dangerous because look at the pawns in front of the king. Uh, one is missing, let's say, but uh, the king is has a it's kind of safe, let's say, and we, we, I mean, the main point that we want to attack as white with h4, rook h3, rook g3, or h5, and rook h4. So many, many different, uh, um, many different plans for white, and uh, it gives new, maybe new hope for white in that line. So instead of long castle, uh, for instance, Luke Van Veli. Uh, played here, short castle, but after knight c6, knight f3, knight c7, it's very well known, the black is completely fine, knight e5, knight g6, and black is just completely fine. So, long castle, let's see how reacted uh, Levon, knight c6, very logical, bishop b3, after rook c8, we just want to play king b2, and uh, pretend uh, this bishop is even a better uh, protecting piece than the pawn. So this makes a lot of sense, of course. Bishop e8. Now, uh, black wants to liquidate massively on d4, so just take, take. And now h4, so this plan I was talking about. Queen f6, rook h3, b5, rook g3. 
King H8, Rook G4, and it became very cha very sharp, and uh, the world champion got uh, uh, um, many winning chances, and it was a very well played draw actually, which uh, was one of the game of the day, and really really impressive play uh, by both sides, and really impressive defense by by Levon, but he got it to into some kind of trouble uh, after the opening. So this is a very interesting idea uh, from the world champion, but now. Uh, let's see the number two of our uh, top five. So this is now Fabiano Caruana as white in the very first round against uh, his countryman um, Ikao Nakamura. So let's see, no surprise with Nakamura. He's going for this Queen's Gambit. He's playing almost ex ex exclusively sorry, uh, this opening these days. So this is of course very well known, Queen a5, Rook d1. It's funny that uh, here Fabiano as black played Rook d8 in his World Championship match against uh, Magnus Carlsen, which was a novelty at that time and now became quite popular. So here Rook e8, which is the main line. The idea is just to play e5 followed by knight d4 at some point. So knight d2, which makes a lot of sense, we just want knight b3. Knight d2, e5, bishop g5, knight d4, this is well known. Of course, this is not possible to take. You just take knight e2, and now knight g4 is just game over, basically. Because I'm totaling d3 followed by mate. If you play b4, I play d3 anyway. Of course, you can take my queen, it would be mate. And if you take my bishop, I will just take the queen. And it's completely winning, of course, for black. So after knight d4, queen b1, which is well known. Bishop f5, very logical. Developing a piece with tempo, takes, takes, 94, and now we'll see the deepness of uh, Fabiano preparation because here, takes, this was played, the, the novelty comes only at move 19, uh, which is kind of uh, crazy. It's not only a, a novelty, it's a completely new concept uh, by Fabiano. So takes on c5, knight d6, and queen f5. Here only short castle was played, but the idea of queen a5, you will see knight takes e5, which is very logical, and now the real uh, concept is to play h4. So the king, the king will stay in the center, and uh, this pawn will push, and this hook will come into action through so h4. So this is very interesting concept by Fabiano, knight, knight e6, knight f3 attacking this pawn, but more importantly, we want to go to g5 and create some attack. Queen a5, and now he plays just king e2. So knight g5 now is a very strong threat, so you have to do something about it. f6, and now h5, threatening uh, h6 and rook h4. This is a bit in the style of uh, alpha zero here. I mean, this uh, h pawn uh, pushing all the way. To, to weaken the, the black king. So Ikawa had to react, he understood that perfectly. If he takes on a3, that would be way too easy. We just play h6, what by take g7, take f6. So Hawk would come into attack easily. So that's not acceptable for black, of course. So he counter attack after, after h5, he, he played e4, then knight d2. And now he took on a3, and Hawk h4 is a very strong move. Just he wants to take here and activate this hook like this. This is very, very tough position for, for Black, to be honest. And uh, Fabiano won an excellent game. But of course, we are here uh, just to check openings and I mean the, the ideas behind them. So we will stop here. And if you want, uh, I'm sure it was uh, one game of the day. So you can have the full game in another video on, the, on our, on our uh, YouTube channel. And now we will go to the number one. So the number one is uh, Ding Liren against the world champion uh, Magnus Carlsen. Ding Liren has uh, always been a very tough opponent for uh, Magnus. Ma they played seven games and it was all uh, all done. And uh, Magnus few times was in great uh, trouble and managed to escape. So. He's really a uh, difficult opponent, as uh, Magnus uh, pointed out uh, uh, before the game and uh, after the game. So d4, Ding is white, starting with d4. 
E6, Knight F3, D5, and G3, which is Catalan, which is one of the the main weapon of the Chinese player. So Magnus goes for Bishop E7. He played a lot of Bishop B4 as well. Bishop E7, Bishop G2, Castle. This is the absolute main line. You cannot find uh, more uh, more mainstream than that. Queen C2, B5, and here, okay, this is already uh, much more rare. Of course, A6 is a move. Here you have two moves as white, queen c4, a4. So it's uh, um, really thousands of games, uh, maybe maybe even more. Uh, so this is really big theory. But b5 is kind of uh, very much more rare, of course. a4. So be aware, be aware of the trap here. Because why not c6? If you see the position for the first time, you just want to go c6, why not? I mean, you want to keep the pawn, you will play bishop b7, knight bd7 a6 this makes a lot of sense but there is a small trap here after c6 we just take here take and knight g5 we attack the hook and of course you cannot put any piece in front the only way not to lose the hook is to play knight d5 but uh, there is a small problem here it's uh, mate in one so this is a small trick of course not for for players like uh, magnus or ding but uh, this is something you should know so after a4, b4 is basically the only move. And now knight fd2 is considered to be the main move. If you take on c4, I will just go bishop b7, knight bd7, fought by c5, and it's very, very comfortable play for, for black. So after knight F, fd2, and now he played knight d5. Nakamura recently was playing a lot of c6. But it was not completely, he lost a painful game against uh, Gitschuk in some uh, Grand Prix. I mean, after knight takes c4, you have to take here, otherwise you're just worse for no reason with this pawn on c6 and this bishop just attacking it. It's very easy to play for white. Just go knight d2, knight b3, bishop f4, knight e5, you will put the rooks. I mean, you know your next 10 moves basically, and it's, uh, I think, very difficult to play as black. So he took here, Nakamura, rook d1, queen c5. In general, you, you lose a lot of tempo, knight d2, knight b3. It's, uh, very easy, very easy development for white, so uh, this line is, is a bit tricky for black, so Magnus played knight d5, which is much more higher, knight takes c4, we just came here with the knight to do that, c5 now, takes, and bishop a6, which is uh, the real novelty, before it was, it was played, uh, I mean, in that line, uh, black played uh, bishop takes c5, but again, Knight bd2 followed by knight b3 e4 and you are the target of uh, of white pieces which will develop with tempo. So after take on c5, bishop a6, with the idea just to play knight c6, rook c8, knight d4, and uh, to play for the, the lead in development. So very interesting concept by the world champion. After bishop a6, of course there is a small problem that you didn't take back that pawn, so you are pawned down. But a 93 looks very threatening, yeah? Just take on d5, rook d1. It looks a bit tricky for black, but 97 is a very strong move. And now it becomes uh, very dangerous for, for white. If he's greedy, takes, takes, bishop d5. Now we just go rook c8. Even knight takes c5 could be an option. After takes, just take. And uh, great compensation. Look at this uh, king. King is weak. Pieces are not developed, it's not so easy to develop them. So that could be possible, but rook c8, of course, with uh, plenty of play. So, of course, Ding uh, doesn't do that, play c6, rook c8, and now bishop b4. Again, the same story after bishop d5, knight e5 is just way too dangerous for white. It's not very practical to do that. If bishop g2, just knight takes c6, bishop takes c6, queen d6. And we'll take back this bishop, so this is very comfortable for black. After rook c8, bishop f4, which uh, develops a piece and threatens c7, so this makes a lot of sense. And now knight c5, very good move. c7, queen d7, and now we have two ways. I mean, the only problem for black is this, is this pawn on c7, because how development is just great. I mean, this rook. If we manage to take, then uh, it will eat uh, the, the white queen. So this is very dangerous. 
so Ding decided to develop ID2 and now G5, which is a very strong move. Just uh, weakening a bit the king, but it doesn't matter. Bishop E5, F6, Bishop D4, Rook C7, cutting Knight E6, because this queen is really well placed. It's really uh, misplaced, sorry. <laughs> queen D1, which is a sad necessity, of course. You don't want to play such moves, but the threat uh, Knight E6 was really, really tough to to prevent. Queen D1, Knight E6 anyway, Knight B3, Bishop C4. Lot of uh, pressure threatening to take and take here. Of course, E3 is never possible because this hook is hanging. Knight A5, it took here, take here. King G7, very strong move and very good move threatening to take here now because if you would take here, it would be uh, Queen D5 with check on the previous move. So King G7 is a very useful move. Uh, of course, if you take here, you will just be worse. Takes, takes, and these pawns are uh, very strong. This pawn majority on queen side is very strong. And uh, here I would say it's a bit more pleasant to play as black. Of course, it's far from winning. I think it's just a small advantage and uh, easier to play. And uh, with this great technique, uh, the world champion uh, managed to, to pull out a win. His first win ever in classical against Ding Liren, so that was a, a really a very, very good game. So this is the end of our uh, top five of opening novelties in Zagreb uh, 2019. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you soon.